Hi, welcome to English Composition. I'm Michael Chang. I'm with Cher Chen today. 各位同学，大家好，欢迎来到英文作文课程。我是 Cher， 在我身边的是郑老师。And today in Unit Four, we're going to learn about how to start an essay by learning about what you should put into an introductory paragraph. 好，我们今天要为各位同学讲解的呢，是在写作你的短文的时候，要怎么样去写作开头引言的这个段落。Now, my favorite relative from Unit Three was the first essay that was introduced to you in this course. 好，我们在上一个单元之中呢，讲到我最喜欢的亲戚这篇文章哦。那这是这一堂作文课第一次看到这样子的短文。And the three body paragraphs in the middle of that essay were similar to the similar in form to the paragraphs that you have written about in the first semester of this course. 好，那我们上个礼拜在看这些文章的这个范例的时候呢，各位同学应该已经发现了，其实呢，它中间主体段落的段落呢，其实跟我们上个学期讲过的段落写作非常相似。However, the first paragraph and the last paragraph of that essay were quite different. 哦，然而呢，大各位同学应该也发现了，在这短文之中呢，第一个段落跟最后一个段落和我们所谓的这个段落写作是非常不一样的。And that's because these two paragraphs have special roles. The first paragraph of an essay is like an expansion of the topic, of, topic sentence of a paragraph, and the last paragraph of an essay is like an expansion of the concluding sentence of a paragraph. 好，那这是因为呢，这两个段落就是第一段跟最后一段，在短文中它是有它特殊的作用的。哦，第一个段落呢，其实就像是段落中主题句的延伸。那最后一个段落，则是像是段落中结尾句的延伸。We're going to take a closer look at an introductory paragraph in this unit. 好，那在这个单元之中呢，我们将会花一点时间来好好的看一看开头引言段落该怎么样写作。And now for a basic introductory paragraph, you have four goals to accomplish. 好，在所谓的开头引言段落之中呢，你有四个目标是必须要去达成的。The first one is to help your readers understand the topic of the essay. 好，第一个你要达成的目标呢，是帮助你的读者了解本文的主题。Our second goal is to tell your exact position on the topic of the essay. 第二个目标则是表明你对这个主题的清楚的立场。Our third goal is to preview or outline the essay. 第三个目的是提示全文或是呈现本文的大纲。And our fourth goal is to attract your readers. 第四个目的则是去吸引读者的注意力。Now let's explain these ideas in greater detail. First, let's explain how the introductory paragraph helps your readers to understand the topic of the essay better. 好，现在呢，就让我们来花点时间，更详细的介绍我们刚刚提过的这些目的。首先，我们先来解释一下，要怎么透过引言段落来帮助读者更了解一个主题。Now, to help your readers understand the topic of the essay means that you should provide some background information to help your readers understand the point of view, your point of view on the topic. 好，所谓的帮助你的读者去了解本文的主题哦，你必须要呢，哦，先提供一些背景资讯，来帮助你的读者里面更能够容易的去理解你对于这个主题的看法。You should consider. Whether there's any information that your reader does not know, but will be helpful in understanding the the general topic better. 好，你应该要考量到呢，是不是有一些资讯是你的读者还不了解，但是如果他了解了，将有助于他们去理解这个主题。For an example, an important piece of background information is the size of the writer's family. 好，我们举我们刚刚提过的这个我最喜欢的亲戚这篇短文来讲的话，呃，作者的家庭的大小呢，也就是我们这里提到最重要的背景资讯。Let's look at our writing model now. My favorite relative. 我最喜欢的亲戚。I come from a really big family. Both my mother and father have four siblings. On holidays, when the whole family gets together, it is hard to keep track of all the aunts and uncles and cousins running around the house. 我来自一个大家庭，我爸爸跟我妈妈各自都有四个兄弟姐妹。每当大家齐聚一堂欢度假期的时候，要记住每一个阿姨、叔叔还有表亲们的名字是件很困难的事。
All right, so now this introductory paragraph gives information about the size of the writer's family. So for example, we find out that the writer has eight aunts or uncles, and there are many cousins. 我们会发现呢，这个引言段落它提供了关于这个作者家庭大小的资讯。我们可以借由这个段落，甚至是前几句话发现哦，作者呢他总共有八个阿姨或是叔叔。And this the phrase "it's hard to keep track of" shows that there are so many relatives on hol on ho the holidays that it can get confusing. 好，那这句话提到说这呃非常多的人，因此很难记住。这代表假期的时候呢，有太多的亲戚了，很容易令人感到混淆。Right, so now let's go back to the writing model. 好，我们现在呢，再回头来看一下剩下来的部分。But among all my relatives, there is one that really stands out. My uncle William. He is a very unusual man. I think that he is odd because of the way he looks and the way he acts. But Uncle William is still my favorite relative. 但是在我众多的亲戚之中，有一个亲戚却非常的突出，也就是我的威廉叔叔。他和一般人非常不一样，我觉得他的外形跟他的行为都很奇特。但是威廉叔叔仍然是我最喜欢的亲戚。Now at the beginning of this introductory paragraph, there's a lot of background material about the size of the writer's family, and this background material is very helpful because. If the reader knows that the author comes from a very large family, they'll understand that Uncle William is even more special because he's the favorite relative out of a very large group of relatives. 好，我们会发现呢，在这个写作范例的呃第一个开头引言段落之中哦，前几句先专注在讲述说这个呃作者呢是来自于一个很为数众多的大家庭哦。那在这样子人数多的地方呢，哦，这份这种背景资料呢，更有助于我们读者哦去理解为什么哦他说这个威廉叔叔呢是属于在众多的亲戚之中作者最喜欢的一位。Right. Let's talk about some other strategies for starting uh, or for writing an introductory paragraph now. 好，我们现在呢花一点时间来讲一下其他相对的啊，其他的一些策略。Now, another way to help your readers understand a topic better is to give information about what is already known about the topic. 好，另外一种呢，能够帮助读者明白主题的办法，则是呢去提供关于这个主题原本就已经广为人知的一些资讯。And so, for example, if you want to write a paper about a special type of animal communication, you could start by explaining some of the key ideas in the history of the field, or by discussing some of the key discoveries that have been made so far. 好，我们举例来讲呢，如果现在您要写的是一篇关于动物具不具有沟通能力这样子的一篇文章，你可以在文章的一开始，也就是开头引言段落的部分，先去解释一下这个领域的一些主要的历史背景，或者是一些主要的发现。So now let's take a look at an introductory paragraph that shows what's already known about a topic. 好，我们现在呢来看一下啊，一个这个开头引言段落的范例哦，它正好呢就是能够告诉我们这个很好的例子。At one time, humans were considered to be the only species that could learn a language. People thought that animal communication was only a reaction to a sound, not an attempt to communicate any meaningful ideas. For example, when a bird sees a hawk, it will cry out. Causing all the other birds to fly away. This is not considered language because the cry was only a reaction caused by the bird's fear. The bird did not intend to tell the other birds to fly away. However, work with apes shows that some animals do have the ability to use language. Chimpanzees and gorillas have the ability to comprehend human speech and communicate through sign language. 好，我们看到这个段落呢，哦，这这个段落主要是在告诉我们，哦，这个动物呢，它们是不是具备有使用能呃语言来进行沟通的能力？那根据这个段落中讲到的一些内容，我们发现哦，像是呃小鸟啊，平常这些哦啾啾叫的声音，哦，不见得代表它是具备这个沟通的能力。但是事实上呢，像是猩猩跟猿猴类，却的确呢是被发现说具备了使用手语来跟人类沟通的能力。Now, this paragraph gives us some information about the past views that scientists had about animal communication. By understanding this past view, we can understand how 
the ways that apes use language now is different and unique. 好，我们知道呢，这个段落它提供了关于过去科学家对于动物使用语言进行沟通的这件事情的看法。哦，那借由了解过去已经知道的这些想法呢，跟研究，我们可以了解为什么在最后我们提到猿猴类是具备于以语言来沟通的这件事情是非常的与众不同的。All right, let's take a break now, and we will continue with more English composition in a moment. 我们现在先休息一下，待会回来我们会再为各位同学继续进行讲解。A third way that you can help your readers understand the topic better is by giving information on the different sides of an issue. 好，那第三种可以帮助读者去了解主题的办法，则是借由提供关于主题的另一面的论述，用这样的方式来帮助他们。And so, for example, you could explain some of the arguments of the opposing side before you explain your position. 好，举例来讲呢，在你解释对于本主题相关的看法之前，你可以先解释一些相反的立场的看法。Here's a paragraph that describes the different sides of an issue. 好，我们来看一个例子，来为各位同学做讲解。Some people believe the world be, would be better off without automobiles. 好，有些人呢，他会相信说这个世界没有了汽车会变得更加的美好。They argue that a world without cars would be safer, since you would no longer have to worry about traffic accidents and drunk drivers. They think that if we don't have to worry about traffic accidents or drunk drivers, the world would be safer, since we would no longer have to worry about The world would also be less polluted, since all the air pollution from auto exhaust and the noise pollution from honking horns and loud engines would disappear. They also think that if the pollution from cars and noise pollution 或者呢，是因为喇叭、以及引擎所造成的噪音污染都消失了，这个世界就会少一些污染。However, cars do provide the benefits to society. They make travel more convenient. They connect people together, and they spur innovation and technological breakthroughs. 然而，汽车确实提供了一些好处，它们让旅行更加便利，也让人们紧紧的联系，还让科技发展有所突破。Now, this paragraph begins by showing us the reasons why people might believe that automobiles hurt society, and then it finishes off with a thesis statement that outlines the counter arguments that cars are, benef are a benefit to society. 好，那这个段落呢，一开始先将为什么人们会认为汽车对于社会有害的原因都讲出来。然后呢，用以描述汽车可能对社会有益的反面意见，当做它这个短文的哦，这个段落哦，或是这个短文的主旨陈述啊、哦，来为这个段落做总结。And now, by putting opposing ideas into the introduction, the writer will have some ideas to attack later on in the paper. And by attacking and disproving the opponent's ideas, you can make your own ideas seem stronger. 好，那透过呢，将反对的意见穿插入你的开头引言这样的方式，作者呢将会让这个呃内文中可以反击的论点呢都先显示出来。因此呢，反击对手的论点哦，可以让这个作者提出来的看法显得更加强而有力。Now let's talk about the second and third goals that we want to accomplish in our introductory paragraph. 好，我们现在呢，第一个论呃呃所谓的目的呢已经讲完了。现在呢，我们来看看第二跟第三以及其他的目的。Now, our second goal is to tell is to tell our exact position on the topic of the essay. 好，我们的第二个目标呢，也就是点出作者对于主题一个确实而清楚的立场。And to tell your exact position on the topic of your essay means that you should write your thesis statement into your introductory paragraph. 好，为了要表明你对于这个主题清楚的立场，你应该在开头引言的段落中就要写出所谓的主旨陈述。And your thesis statement should be a clear and concise statement about what you want your readers to know by the end of the essay. 好，主旨陈述呢，应该能够清楚简洁的表达出你希望读者在结尾前所能够知道的事情。Now, our third goal is to preview or outline our essay. 好，我们第三个目标则是提示全文或是呈现全文的大纲。To preview, preview or outline. The essay means that you should tell the major points that you're going to make in the essay, and this is like a very brief summary of what is going to happen or what you're going to write about in the rest of the essay. 
。好，所谓的提示全文或是呈现大纲，指的就是你将说出来这个短文里面会出现的一些重点。哦，那其实就像是一个非常简短的摘要哦，它能够说出文章中其他的段落会讲到的事情。And our preview serves three purposes. 哦，这样子的提示呢，总共会有三个不一样的作用。The first is to help you organize the essay. 第一个作用就是帮助你去组织你的短文。The body paragraphs of your essay should follow the same order as the ideas that were previewed in your introductory paragraph. This keeps you on track as you write the rest of your essay. 好，这主这个主题段落、哦、它出现的一个顺序哦，应该要和第一段在开头段落里所提示到的是一模一样的。这样子的一个方式呢，也能够帮助你去掌握文中在其他段落的一个进度。All right, now second, it also gives prior knowledge about your topic to your reader. 好，第二点呢，则是能够给予读者他们应该要优先知道的一些资料。It's always easier to understand the topic if you learn something about it in the past. 啊，那如果读者呢，他心目中哦已经有了一点背景知识的话呢，总是能够比较容易的去理解我们接下来要讲的内容。Now, sometimes the topic of an essay may be difficult, and so it may be something that your reader had no exposure to in the past. But if you preview all the major points that you're going to make. In your introduction, it gives your reader just a little bit of understanding about what's going to come up in the body of your essay. 好，那有时候呢，这个短文的主题哦，可能是有一点困难的。那也有可能是这个读者呢，在过去从来没有接触过的一个新的主题。那如果说你能够在这开头引言的段落的部分，先提示读者这个文中将会出现的一些重点的话，这也有助于你的读者呢，去了解接下来要提到的一些重要内容。And also, third, it helps to helps your readers to judge if the essay is relevant. 好，那第三点呢，则是它可以帮助你的读者去判断这篇短文是否切题相关。And so sometimes when a person is reading an essay or or a report, they're looking for some specific information, and having a preview of the main ideas of your essays help these people to judge whether they should take the time to read the rest of your essay. 啊，这也就是说呢，在开头引言段落之中，你已经提示了一些重点，这有可以帮助你的读者去决定是否值得花一些时间去把整篇文章看完。Now let's take a look at some examples of thesis statements. 好，我们现在呢来看一下写作者主旨陈述的一些例子。In the writing model, this is the thesis statement. 好，我们现在各位同学在荧幕上看到的呢，是我们写作范例里面的主旨陈述。I think that he is odd because of the way he looks and the way he acts. But he's still my favorite relative. 我觉得他的外形及行为都很奇特，但威廉叔叔仍然是我最喜欢的亲戚。And this thesis statement accomplishes our second goal because it gives the exact position of the writer on the topic when it states Uncle William is still my favorite relative. 好，那这个主旨陈述呢，就完成了我们刚刚提到第二个目的，因为这个主旨陈述之中已经明确的点出了作者对于主题的立场，也就是他最喜欢的亲戚就是威廉叔叔了。And it also accomplishes our third goal because it organizes the rest of the essay by listing the order for the points that the writer will cover. 好，那他也完成了第三个目的，因为呢，借由这个架构好文章接下来的一个架呃理路哦，他去条列出作者将会在这主体段落的部分去讨论的内容。Here are the last two sentences of our second example introductory paragraphs about animal communication. 好，我们接下来看到的下一个例子呢，是我们刚刚提到关于动物沟通能力的这个段落中的主旨陈述。And we can see that these sentences also accomplish our second and third goal for an introductory paragraph. 好，我们会发现呢，这个主旨陈述哦，也完成了我们刚刚提到第二及第三个目标。And the phrase "some animals do have the ability to use language" shows the writer's exact position on the topic of animal communication. 好，那其中他提到说，有些动物的确具备使用语言的能力。这句话呢，就点出了作者他明确的立场。And the last sentence shows that the essay will have two body paragraphs. 而且最后一句话呢，它也表明了这篇文章中将会有两个段落。The first body paragraph will be about how chimpanzees and gorillas can comprehend human speech. 好，那第一个主体段落呢，我们可以猜到它会讲的是关于大猩猩们怎么样去理解人类的语言。And the second body paragraph will be about how they can communicate through sign language. 那第二个主体段落呢？我们只猜得到哦，它会讲述的是关于大猩猩们如何透过手语来进行沟通。
and let's take a look at our last example paragraph about automobiles, and we can see how it shows the also shows the exact position of the writer. 好，我们接下来看第三个例子，也就是我们刚刚提到关于汽车的这篇这个呃短的段落哦，我们看看它的主旨陈述是什么。And we can see here that the writer's viewpoint is that cars do have a benefit to society. 好，我们会发现呢，这个主旨陈述要表现的是，呃，作者的一个观点哦，也就是汽车呢，对于社会的确是有贡献的。And so this lets us know very quickly if we're interested in reading the rest of the article, and also the last sentence of the introductory paragraph tells us what the writer's three major arguments are. 好，那这样子的一个主旨陈述呢，就让我们知道说，哎，这篇这个短文大概会讲些什么。如果我们对这个主题有兴趣的话呢，我们就可以继续去阅读。那当然啦，最后一句话呢，也点出来了这篇文章会提到的三个重要的论点。And so this organizes the rest of the essay and also gives the readers a preview of what the writer's arguments are. 啊，那这样的写作方式呢，当然就是一方面能够架构好整篇文章哦接下来的段落，那同时呢，也能够帮助读者先行的了解哦接下来会提到什么样的一些论点。Right, let's take a break now. We'll be back in a few moments. 好，我们先休息一下，待会回来我们再为各位同学继续进行讲解。Welcome back. Now let's talk about the fourth and last goal that we want to accomplish in our introductory paragraph. 好，欢迎各位同学回来。接下来呢，我们要为各位同学继续讲解的是第四个哦，也就是最后一个我们必须要知道的哦，所谓的呃、哦、这个完成开头引言段落的目的。Now our fourth goal is to attract our readers. 好，第四个目的呢，也就是去吸引读者。And to attract your readers means that you want your readers to feel like your essay is interesting. You want to say something that will motivate your readers to continue reading the rest of the essay. So you need to consider what what is important to your readers. 好，所谓吸引读者的注意呢，指的是说，希望你的读者会觉得这篇文章哦，读起来蛮有趣的哦。你会希望读者呢，能够因此而打算继续把文章其他的段落都读完。所以呢，你必须要想一想，什么是对于读者而言是重要的。So, is there some kind of important or controversial, controversial issue that your readers are interested in? And you can create interest by letting your readers know that you're going to write about your opinion on that issue. 好，你要想一想，有没有什么是重要而且具有争议性的话题，能够去吸引你的读者呢？哦，你可以呢，让读者知道你将会针对某一些特殊的议题去提出一些论述，借以引起你的读者的兴趣。Or is there something interesting, helpful, or useful that you know, and you can let your readers know that you're going to teach them about that? 啊，或者是呢，你可以想一想，有没有什么好玩的哦，能够帮助别人的，或是一些比较不寻常的事情呢？哦，你可以借由传授这些知识给读者知道，来引起他们的兴趣。Or maybe you have an have a relationship with your reader, and you want to deepen that relationship, and so then you can share about a significant personal experience to let your readers know you better. 啊，也或者呢，你可以呢去加深你跟读者之间的某种联系关系哦。那这样子呢，哦，透过你跟读者分享你本身特别的经验的这种方式呢，让你的读者更加的了解你。So here are some other strategies that you can use to attract attention in your introductory paragraph. 好，那我们现在呢来为各位同学介绍一些你可以应用在开头引言段落用来吸引的读者的方法。So first, you can state a surprising fact or statistic. 好，第一点，你可以发表一个令人惊讶的事实或是一个数据。Two, use an anecdote. 好，第二点，你可以加入一些奇闻异事。Three, use a quotation or a proverb. 第三点，你可以引用一些名言或者是一些谚语。Four, begin with a question. 第四点，你可以以一个问题作为开始。Five, make a controversial statement. 第五个，你是做出一个争议性的论述。Six. Start with a with some general information, and then finish with a question. 好，最后一点呢，则是以一个概括性的讯息作为开始，然后呢，以一个问题作为结束。Now, in all of these strategies, you explain what the significance of the fact, the story, or the question is, and that will lead to your thesis statement, which should tell your viewpoint on the fact, the story, the question, or the statement. 好，在这些技巧当中呢，你还要去解释我们刚刚提到的这些事实啊、故事啊、问题或是陈述的重要性。这个重要性能够引导出你的主旨陈述，并且呢，提出来你对于刚刚说的这些例子的一些观点。
So in review, when you begin writing your introduction, the most basic strategy is to start with a general statement. 好，总结而言呢，当你开始撰写最初的引言段落时，最基本的技巧就是一个一般性概括性的陈述作为起手起头。You start with some information about the general background of the topic. 首先呢，先以一些关于主题的背景资讯作为开始。The next sentences, sentence or sentences, narrow the topic down into something smaller and more specific, and then you state the thesis of your of your essay. 之后呢，你的句子则要逐步的缩小主题的范围，让你的主题变得更加的具体且明确，然后你才能够提出全文的主旨。And you often combine your thesis statement and the preview of the essay into one sentence. 你通常呢可以将主旨陈述与全文的重点提示合并，成为一个单一的句子。In this type of introduction, your thesis statement will appear at the end of your introductory paragraph. 好，在这种类型的这个引言段落之中呢，你的主旨陈述将会出现在首段介绍哦，这开头段落的最后。And the introductory paragraph of your writing model uses this strategy. 好，那在我们这个提到的写作范例中，开头引言段落中啊，其实就引用了我们刚刚所谓的这个技巧。And finally, there are some mistakes that you should avoid. 好，那最后呢，还有一些错误是我们要提醒同学必须要避免的。And so, first of all, do not try to say too much in your introduction. 好，第一点，不要在开头介绍的段落写太多的内容。You should just give a brief preview of your major ideas, and you should not give all the details. Give all the details of all your arguments. 好，你只要呢给个简短的哦，关于你的各项重点的大概提示就可以了。你不用去详细解释所有的论点。And then another mistake to avoid is do not start by writing my topic is or I am about to write I'm going to write about. 好，那第二个重要应该要避免的错误，则是千万啊，千万不要用我的主题是或是我将要写的是哦这样的一个句子来作为你的开头。All right, so now let's talk about the homework that you're going to do for this week. 好，我们现在呢来跟各位同学谈谈这礼拜要做的作业啦。All right. So first of all, what you should do is you should re review the material in this unit. 好，第一点，请各位同学要记得复习一下这个单元的内容。And so next, do the writing analysis exercise, and then do the writing activity. 接下来把课本中提到的一些这个练习跟作业都完成。And so for your writing activity, what we're going to do is remember how you started working on an essay last week. 好，这一课要请各位同学的这个写作实习哦，跟我们上个礼拜哦开始练习的东西有点相关哦。And so last week we asked you to write a paragraph about your favorite relative. And so what we want you to do now is to start expanding that paragraph into an essay. 上个礼拜呢，我们请同学开始写作一个段落，去谈论你最喜欢的亲戚。那这个礼拜，请各位同学开始把这个段落哦做一个扩展跟延伸，开始试着去写出你的开头引言。And so right now, you should make an outline of that essay, and then also write the introductory paragraph of the essay. 好，那你现在要做的呢，就是点出文章的重点，条列出它的大纲，然后呢，照着这个提示开始去写下你的开头引言段落跟主旨陈述。And remember to finish that paragraph with a thesis statement that tells the main point of your essay. 这个主旨陈述呢，当然要能够把你所要提到的论点都要好好的讲出来喽。All right. Thanks for joining us this week for English composition. We'll be back with you again next week. 谢谢各位同学今天的参与。我们下个礼拜再见。